Okay. So I will just say, uh, hello everybody. I am inviting Professor J.K. Verma from Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, to chair this uh, new session. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, hello everyone. Uh, these are the two last talks for today. So, uh, welcome back. Uh, our first uh, speaker in this last session is Professor Dragomir uh, Sari. Uh, I hope I am pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, he is from City University of New York, uh, Graduate Center and Queens College. So I suppose uh, you have been colleague of Professor Kulkarni. Uh, he'll speak on quadratic differentials uh, and measured foliations on infinite surfaces. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it is a real pleasure to give a talk to Andravi's uh, birthday conference, his 80th birthday conference. Uh, I sort of met Ravi when I was a graduate student at the graduate center and he was giving a talk on Riemann surfaces and uh, he was asking us some very kind of non-standard interesting questions. So that was uh, my first meeting with Ravi. And then after a while I, I was away and then uh, I came back uh, as a faculty at, at Queens College and yes, we were together there for some time. Uh, so Ravi, happy birthday, uh, all the best. So, um, so I talk about uh, quadratic differentials and measured foliations on infinite surfaces. And um, uh, oops, sorry, I'm trying to. Oh, okay. So I'm going to start with um, as being a compact Riemann surface and. Um, and uh, a genus greater than or equal to, uh, which means that S has also a unique uh, hyperbolic uh, metric in its conformal class. So I will talk about both of them at the same time. Uh, a Riemann surface structure and the hyperbolic metric. Um, so the technical space of uh, the Riemann surface S is the space of all uh, Quasi-conformal maps from the fixed Riemann surface S to variable surfaces, which call them S1, uh, up to um, the usual uh, post-composition by conformal maps and homotopy. So an element is, is a class of quasi-conformal maps. The element of technical space is a class of quasi-conformal maps. Uh, the technical distance between uh, two uh, classes of quasi conformal maps F and G is given as uh, one half the log of the quasi conformal constant uh, of, of a map H, where map H is uh, arbitrary map, uh, which is in the homotopy class of F composed with G inverse. And uh, we have infimum over all this H. And uh, 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 sort of a way to figure out what this infimum is, is to find H with, with the smallest quasi-conformal constant. Um, sorry. So, um, so then the sort of the, the story starts by, with the, with the uh, result of Tech Miller, which says that um, for every F quasi-conformal from S to some S1, there exists a unique holomorphic quadratic differential phi on S, such that when you uh, take the when you integrate the square root of phi, you get you get natural coordinates uh, for uh, for this holomorphic quadratic differential phi, and you can do the the shrinking of the vertical direction, the stretching of horizontal direction, and you get um, you get a, a particular quasi-conformal map, and then the Tachymuller's theorem is saying that. Uh, for every f, there exists a unique uh, holomorphic quadratic differential such that uh, this map is in the in the homotopy class of f, and it is extremal. So that kind of solves the the problem of finding the extremal uh, Teichmuller uh, extremal quasi formal uh, uh, map in in the given homotopy class. Um, so then, then uh, after that, you can you can talk about the mapping class group. So you can fix a quasi if you take a quasi from map from the surface S to itself, 
then this map acts on the technical space by a geometry with respect to this uh, technical distance. Um, and then the next question here is, okay, so uh, uh, if you take arbitrary factor, if you take arbitrary geometry of the technical space, then um, what, what, what are all of them? And then Royden's theorem minus some uh, lower genus cases. Uh, Royden's theorem says that uh, any isometry of the technical space is induced by a particular mapping class. So that's kind of the next kind of element here. Um, uh, so then uh, an, an isometry uh, of the technical space, which sends S1, S to S1 induces uh, a linear, this is a linear map between the spaces of holomorphic differentials on S and S1. Um, and, um, and a particular holomorphic differential uh, on S uh, also has, uh, a note, we have a notion of horizontal foliation where the transverse measure is the imaginary part of the square root of uh, quadratic differential times DC. Um, so, so then uh, in the view of importance of uh, quadratic differentials in, in, the, in the Teichmiller theorem and in Royden's theorem, uh, and with, with, in the view of other applications, then the question is what kind of, um, what kind of, what, what is the, 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 the set of all possible, um, uh, these horizontal collisions that uh, you, you get when you consider every possible holomorphic quadratic differential on the Riemann surface? And then there's this famous theorem of Hubbard and Maser, which was also proved by Kirchhoff, which says that uh, this space, if, if you fix a surface S, Riemann surface S, and you look at the space of all holomorphic differentials on the surface S, then, um, and, and for each differential, you look at its horizontal uh, foliation, then this space is in one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence with, this, with, this, with the space of measured foliations on S. Uh, and um, these, um, when we say measured foliations, we mean also uh, equivalence classes of measured foliations. They're up to homotopy uh, or maybe isotopy and up to whitehead moves. So there, that's, that's, that's the, the hubbard maser uh, theorem. And that's kind of the, the main topic for me in the case of infinite surfaces. Okay. Um, so, but before going there, uh, Thurston proved that the space of measured uh, foliations on the Riemann surface S is homeomorphic to the space of measured laminations on the Riemann surface F, S, where measured lamination is, is uh, um, supported. Uh, when I say measured lamination, I mean respect to the hyperbolic metric. So uh, the, supports, uh, the support of measured lamination is, is a geodesic lamination, where geodesics are hyperbolic geodesic and it, they have a transverse measure. So, um, so I like to think about this theorem as being saying that to any uh, holomorphic differential, there is a unique measured lamination associated by straightening the horizontal foliation into geodesic, uh, geodesic lamination. So even though foliation covers the whole surface, geodesic lamination will cover just part of the surface. And the converse is true also. If you take any, any measured lamination, there is a holomorphic quadratic differential, which will realize uh, these measured laminations by uh, foliation. So that's the point of view I like to think about this. Thing. So now we're gonna go to the space of infinite surfaces. So X is, um, you can think of infinite surface as, um, uh, quotient of a hyperbolic plane with, with a discrete torsion free subgroup of PSL2R, which is infinitely generated. And uh, from now on, we assume that they always are the first kind. So the, the, the limit set is the whole uh, ideal boundary of the hyperbolic plane. Uh, so then going in this, uh, going in this uh, same direction as in the compact surface uh, case, uh, first Reichen Strabel proved that if you have an integrable holomorphic quadratic differential on X. So in the case of uh, infinite surfaces, you, you have uh, several or many, many different classes of quadratic differentials on, on, uh, on the surface, holomorphic quadratic differential on the surface. And um, uh, here you, you want to impose the condition of being integrable. You can talk about other classes as well, but integrable here is important. So if it's integrable, then when you take this natural parameter, 
then the affine maps which do vertical shrinking and horizontal stretching is uniquely extremal. So that's a, a result of Reichen Um However, uh, also there is this uh, anomaly uh, or maybe interesting thing if you like analysis is that not every homotopy class has such nice extremal representative. Not every homotopy class is, is, contains these. And then the question is, well, if that's the case, how bad the situation is? And then Gardner Lakic using some, uh, using a stable uh, mapping frame condition, they show that the set of F, which have a nice uh, extremal representative using this integrable holomorphic differential is open and dense subset of the technical space. So even though not all of them are in this nice form, um, they are, the ones they are, they, they make open and dense subset. Um, so going to the questions uh, about, uh, going to the questions uh, about um, um, uh, isometry, so, okay, sorry. Uh, about isometries of, of the technical space of infinite surface. Uh, so Earl and Gardner proved that isometry of technical space of infinite surface induces a bounded linear map between the spaces of integrable homomorphic differentials on the surface and its image. So if you have an isometry, global isometry of, of the technical space, then you can take uh, some one point and map it to another, and then you have uh, the space of quadratic differentials on one and the space of quadratic differentials on, on the image, and then isometry induces a bounded linear map. So it's important here to kind of put the word bounded because the surface is not uh, finite, so you can have unbounded linear maps. So uh, that was the first result. And using this result, uh, and um, I guess uh, the work of uh, sort of the idea of Royden in the case of a complex surface luggage was able to prove that if X is a finite genus, but infinite surface, but of finite genus, um, he was able to prove that any isometry is induced by a quasi conformal self map of X. Uh, however, this, this was not appeared to be able to extend this thing beyond uh, this technique. So, and then in the completely kind of uh, new way, uh, again, using homo integrable holomorphic category differentials, Markovic was able to prove that any bounded linear isometry induces a quasi-conformal mapping class of the technical space that, uh, and that kind of extend, extended Royden's theorem for arbitrary surfaces. Um, so that's what, what is known. So going, uh, going forward, so as I said, I would like to talk about the Maser, uh, uh, the Hubbard Maser version of the, this theorem for infinite surfaces. First, um, when we talk about infinite surfaces, the point of view that I like to take, and maybe Ara and maybe some other people, and recently other more than than us, I guess, is the the first theorem is due to Alvarez and Rodriguez, and also we have kind of a more general version uh, together with Ara. I have a more general version. So, if X is an infinite surface of the first kind then this surface can always be obtained by gluing uh, geodesic pairs of pants. Uh, and this gluing has to be obtained by isometry, uh, gluing by isometries on the boundary. So that's kind of, um, um, that, that's, what we, that's what we obtain. And then in fact, you can prove a, a more, basically if you know the surfaces of the first kind, and if you just take any topological pants decomposition, then um, every boundary of your topological pair of pants can be straightened to unique closed uh, hyperbolic geodesic. And then uh, it's also true that this obtained pairs of pants, which are now geodesic, cover the whole surface. So you can always straighten any topological pan decomposition into geodesic pan decomposition. So this is like a structure theorem, which tells you how to uh, think about a general, uh, general surface um, whose uh, current group is of the first kind. So this is an example. It's a fluid surface where you have, um, where you have, this is the first pair of pants. You have two, uh, you have two cusps and one boundary geodesic. And then this is the next pair of pants where you have two boundary uh, geodesic and one, one cusp. And then the gluing here is done uh, by isometry. And then we can keep going like that, adding more and more pairs of paths. Do, do you see my uh, pointer? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. 
So we can just keep going like that. This is the famous uh, infinite fluid surface, uh, which uh, Ara has been uh, promoting, and uh, I kind of like it as well. Um, so that's one way of constructing. Uh, so that's uh, that's our our way of thinking of what an infinite surface is: just gluing infinitely many pairs of fans by geometry along boundaries. Uh, then there's a by infinite fluid surface. We can do it in both directions, but also you can kind of instead of Having a puncture, you can add a genus here if you like. Um, and uh, this is a, a Cantor surface where you uh, keep gluing pairs of pads and get Cantor set of ends. And these all these gluing, these are all uh, geodesic pairs of pads, and uh, all this gluing is uh, done by isometries. Okay. So having this kind of point of view, uh, first, uh, there is a proposition by Martin and Strabel, which says that every horizontal trajectory, which is not singular for an integral of homomorphic differential, can be straightened to a simple hyperbolic geodesic on the surface. That's kind of not immediately clear because surface is infinite, but because the, you assume that differential, quadratic differential is integrable, that is true. Um, so you can, you can kind of start to, to Think if you take A of X to be the space of all integrable holomorphic differentials on X, uh, then you can define this map, which are called horizontal measure map, which basically says you take a quadratic differential phi, which is integrable on X, and then you can straighten each of its horizontal leaf to measure uh, to geodesic lamination, and then you can uh, get the geodesic lamination on X, and you can do the uh, you can do the push forward of the transverse measure of the horizontal foliation to the, your geodesic lamination, and you get a map from the space of all integrable holomorphic cutting differentials into measured laminations, and this map is injective. Uh, however, when you think about the Ravi, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Uh, if you have some lower bound, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. If you have some lower bound for the length of Jordi 6. Okay. Then can you extend Lakic's results or, or oh. that, that's not the issue? Uh, it's not the issue. Uh, I mean, uh, Markovic extended Lakic's result to all surfaces. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right here. So he proved for all surfaces. So he had a different proof, uh, which also used col integrable polymer for that differential. Sorry. Um, Okay, so uh, so then the question that I think it's interesting now is what is the image of this uh, integrable holomorphic quadratic differentials in the space of measured laminations? And the first observation is that uh, not every measured laminations can be can be realized by a, by a horizontal foliation of a quadratic differential. Um, uh, one example is if you take uh, if you if you just take any uh, geodesic which goes from one end to the other by infinite geodesic, which goes from one end to the other, anyway that you like, you cannot realize that one by a quadratic differential, which is integrable. Because if you if you realize that geodesic, you will have to have kind of a, a definite strip of definite width, which goes from one end to the other, and that would force this end to open and the surface will not be of the first kind. So, um, that that's kind of in a nutshell the proof of that um okay so then the question was like what would that uh what would that um image be what which measure laminations can be realized as uh horizontal foliations of integrable differentials and the first definition here is due to garden lackage which is um which was given on on compact surfaces and I think their the motivation certainly goes back to Jenkins. Uh, so basically, they define something which is called a partial measured foliation. So that's the collection of charts which does not cover the whole surface, and differentiable functions from the charts to the real numbers. 
such that take uh, v inverse of, of any um, real number, that's a differentiable arc. And the transition between uh, differentiable map vi and vj is the same as in the case of, um, um, as in case of natural parameter for the uh, for the holomorphic quadratic differential. So VI is plus minus VG plus a constant on the intersection. Um, so that's what a partial measured foliation is. Um, and then a, a horizontal trajectory of a partial measured foliation F is the maximal extension of these differentiable arcs. That's the same as in the uh, holomorphic quadratic differential case. And then I introduce additional thing. I will say that F is proper partial foliation if all but maybe contour many horizontal trajectories are homotopic to hyperbolic geodesic. So I just impose that as, as a condition. Um, and by this transition map that VI is plus minus VJ plus a constant on intersection of two charts, you can define Dirichlet uh, energy of, of your foliation using perhaps partition of unity or in some other way of doing it, but you can define this integral. Uh, and uh, so the main character in this story here is this definition. Uh, so uh, ML stands for measured lamination, F stands for foliation of X. So those are all measured laminations such that there exists a proper partial foliation with uh, whose uh, straightening of, of leaves is equal to this measured foliation mu and whose Dirichlet integral is finite. So that's a proper subset of, of the set of, uh, of all measured laminations. And uh, the, 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 the first theorem here is saying that uh, that's actually the image. So uh, uh, the map which straightens horizontal foliation to a geodesic lamination and push forward the measure. So this, the measure map uh, is, uh, is in, uh, makes the space of integrable holomorphic differential in one-to-one -one correspondence with this, this space ML of F of this proper partial foliations, which, uh, which can be uh, realized uh, by, uh, who, which have finite Dirichlet integral. Um, so any questions here? Okay, all right. Um, so let's look at the special case. The special case is if you uh, take uh, if you take a, a countable family of uh, disjoint uh, embedded annuli in in an infinite surface X, uh, you you assume they are not homotopic. They are essentially assume they are not homotopic to a point. Uh, they are not homotopic to each other and uh, they are disjoint. So they are, they are geometrically realized in, in your surface and there's countably many of them. And you take uh, some numbers BN positive. Also for each RN, you have a certain BN positive number. And then um, uh, Strabel and Jenkins, or maybe Strabel and Jenkins has some other version of that the result says the following. So if the sum, um, oops, sorry, I don't see my, so if, um, if the sum uh, of Bn squared over the modulus of Rn is less than infinity, then there exists a integrable holomorphic quadratic differential whose uh, non-singular horizontal trajectories are, are actually homotopic to these cylinders and the heights are equal to these numbers Bn. And, and this sum here is actually Dirichlet integral of, of the foliation. So, so this special, this is a special case of, of my theorem above, which says that um, you you can you can uh, so so this condition here is actually the Dirichlet integral of uh, of a particular foliation. Um, so that's how you can think about uh, this condition of being finite Dirichlet integral. It's some kind of condition which kind of allows you to have. Uh, Partial, uh, partial realization of what you would like to think that uh, your, uh, that, that, that the horizontal trajectory of your uh, quadratic differential are. So that, that's, that's, what, uh, that, that's what this theorem is saying. 
Uh, okay. Um, so now we are going uh, to applications of this theorem. So uh, a geodesic flow on the unit tangent bundle of X is the flow which moves a uh, unit tangent vect vector with the unit speed along a, a geodesic tangent to the vector. So there is this famous theorem, which uh, really has many, many people more here, which I didn't put, and you can put also many, many more conditions. Uh, that goes back to Alfors and, and, and Sario and all other people who were working at that time, point, even Poincaré, and there is Hop, Suji, Sullivan, Astala, Zins, Meister, Bishop, and probably some others, which I'm uh, forgetting to put here. But it says the following. So you assume X is uh, quotient, uh, of the uh, hyperbolic plane with the group G and it X is an infinite surface. And then the following are equivalent. Um, the geodesic flow uh, on X is ergodic. Uh, and then that's equivalent to the fact that the Poincaré series diverges where Poincaré series is the sum of the elements of the group, of the current group of E to the minus hyperbolic distance between uh, some point Z and image of Z under gamma. So, uh, being ergodic is equivalent that Poincaré series, uh, geodesic flow being ergodic is equivalent that Poincaré series is uh, divergent. Uh, that, uh, that in turn is equivalent to the fact to, to, uh, that the Brownian motion of X is recurrent. Uh, that, that in turn is equivalent to the fact that X satisfies the Bowen property, which means that if you take a quasi conformal deformation of your uh, group G, then the limit set is either a circle or has house of dimension bigger than one. That's a result of Bishop and Astal Zinsmeister, uh, more recent. Um, another thing is X does not support Green's function, which is sometimes in classical uh, uh, notation, you know that X is null of G. Null of G, G is for Green's function. So X is an element of null G, doesn't support Green function or sometimes it's called that X is parabolic or parabolic type. Um, and then another thing is that the harmonic measure of the boundary of X is zero. And th there, are other, there are other ways of defining. So I'm gonna talk now, what is this harmonic measure? What kind of condition, what, what, what this means that harmonic measure is zero or not? Um, so I'm gonna talk about that. Um, so, so what we do, we take X, and we take exhaustion of X by compact, by border compact surfaces with smooth boundary contours. So, and we just kind of exhaust the surface in this, in this way. Um, and uh, then we took, uh, then we take uh, UN uh, to be solution to the Dirichlet problem on XN minus X1. So X1 has some boundary contours and XN far off has some other boundary contours. So we take, uh, we uh, put uh, boundary condition zero on X on the boundary of X one and put boundary condition one on the boundary of X n and we take uh, we solve the shape problem so we get a harmonic function with these boundary values uh, and then by Harnack's principle uh, this uh, sequence of harmonic functions converges. Uh, on the whole surface X minus X on as, as going to infinity, this sequence will converge just because it's bounded and uh, it's decreasing uh, by, uh, by the maximum principle for harmonic functions. And then uh, we have a limit. Uh, okay, so the limit, U, I'll call the limit U. So that's a harmonic function. U uh, on X minus X one is between zero and one could be zero. Uh, and if it's zero in one point, then it's identically equal to zero. And uh, to be, to have a, uh, for a boundary of the surface to, to have a harmonic measure zero means that U is, is identically zero. This limit is identically zero. So U identically zero is equivalent to saying that X is in null G or X is a parabolic type. And if U is not zero, that means X is not a parabolic type. X is not in null G. Even though the surface, uh, even though your uh, group G is of the first kind, uh, still it happens that uh, uh, that Brownian motion can escape to infinity. So somehow the complexity of the surface and the geometry is such that even though um, uh, the limit point is the whole uh, circle at infinity, the, the Brownian motion or the geodesic flow can escape to infinity. Um, 
So, so then I will start from this point. I'm going to try to think about what does it mean not to be parabolic? So if X is not parabolic, then we have this harmonic function U, which is not zero. And this U is defined on X minus X1, which is this first subsurface, compact subsurface. And this U, well, you can, you can take locally its uh, harmonic conjugate and call it V. And you can use this V to define partial foliation, which we'll call F sub U. And uh, you can uh, you can prove that the Dirichlet integral of this f sub u is finite. That basically has to do with the fact that you the, the length of each trajectory is bounded by one because u is between zero and one, and um, and then you start from a surface x one which has finitely many boundary contours and uh, the the length of each in <coughs> in in the harmonic conjugate parameter is finite. So it's like some kind of area argument. <clears throat> Sorry. So, um, so we have a partial foliation, but uh, it's, uh, um, it's not on the whole surface. It is on X minus X one. And then the idea is kind of obvious. Um, so what, we can extend this partial, partial foliation on X one, because what's happening now, I have X one, which is some finite, uh, finite surface uh, with a couple of boundary components and then and I have my foliation coming from the outside to these boundary components and that gives me some numbers some uh, trans some uh, transfers uh, some uh, transverse numbers on the boundaries and then inside that surface I just need to connect them with some kind of partial foliation inside um, so so that the, the the they match on the boundary so and then there there is a way to do that using uh, some standard uh, Dirichlet von Neumann solution to, to Dirichlet von Neumann solutions to this problem, and you get a, a partial foliation on the whole surface, uh, where it, which is proper. Each leaf is is homotopic to uh, hyperbolic geodesic, and it has a finite Dirichlet norm because extension on on the finite part always has finite Dirichlet norm, uh, and uh, and then also. Since uh, the way that we define this u, u is zero on x boundary of x one and one on on uh, and and it's going toward one and increasing, uh, and it's increasing. Then every leaf of f u is does not come back. It goes all the way to the boundary of the surface, and then we extended um, uh, we extended this uh, we extended here to connect. So you have every leaf going to infinity. Uh, so then using, uh, using the first theorem that I said here, the, the main theorem here, um, we, can, uh, we can apply and we can get, uh, we can get uh, integrable Holmorph quadratic differential uh, phi whose, uh, whose straightening is equal to, uh, is actually equal to the straightening of this measured foliation F. Um, so therefore we have the following theorem. Uh, so this theorem is saying that um, if X is an infinite surface uh, with the group, uh, here I wrote it down before it was G, so it should be G, uh, uh, with the group G of the first kind. So if X, if X is not uh, parabolic, then there exists a holomorphic quadratic differential, which is integral, call it phi naught, such that the horizontal trajectories of phi naught escape to infinity at both ends. So that's always possible to construct. Uh, conversely, if X is uh, parabolic and phi is some integrable uh, differential on X, uh, then uh, Martin and Strabel have, pro have proved that uh, trajectories cannot escape to infinity. So this argument is somewhat easier because they're using, uh, they're computing extremal length and then um, in the case of parabolic surface, extremal length of things in scaping infinity has to be zero. And, um, and that, that, that's uh, a bit easier than this other, uh, this uh, theorem here. But uh, putting these two things together, uh, we can add uh, here, uh, we can add uh, uh, two more lines to that uh, theorem, which has many people in. So X, the following equivalent, so X is, uh, Null G or X is parabolic or all other things. That's equivalent to saying that um, uh, 
that that the the measure of foliation the measure of foli of horizontal trajectories of any integrable holomorph holomorphic kinetic differential that escape to infinity is zero. That's if and only if stated now. And um, if uh, if you have any uh, measured that measured lamination in in our set MLF, so the one which are realized by partial foliations, the mu measure of geodesic of its support that escaped infinity is also zero. So that, uh, in addition to being just uh, addition to this uh, theorem, it's also kind of to me uh, is a little bit uh, more constructive. Like if you if you're given your surface where you have your geodesic pans decomposition. Then you can hope that, um, at least in some favorable conditions, you'll be able to, to check these things directly and, and to kind of decide whether your favorable, favorite surface is uh, parabolic or not. So that's the, that's the direction I'm going with this. So, um, so for example, an X is a canter tree surface in a joint work with uh, Basmajian and Hakobian. Uh, uh, we showed that uh, if you remember the, the this canter, Cantor surface has level and geodesics, and then you keep adding to make a cantor surface. You keep adding a geodesic pairs of pants, and the level end there is two to the n boundary cuffs, because you have to kind of you do the the cantor tree, and then at the level end you have two to the n boundary cuffs. So what we proved is that on this level n, if the lengths are very small, like of the order n over two to the n, there is two to the n of them, and if we if lengths are allowed to be not more than n over two to the n, then x is parabolic. Uh, geodesic flow is ergodic. That that was our proof there. And on the other hand, when I talked to McMullen, and then he he actually told me that he can he proved in some of his previous work that if the lengths are bounded or at least bounded from below by positive constant, then x is definitely not parabolic. So this is saying somehow like you have your, your Cantor surface and there is so many different directions to escape to infinity. And if the lengths are just simply bounded, then the fact that you have so many ways to escape, escape to infinity, uh, uh, the, the geodesic flow will escape to infinity and the surface will not be parabolic. On the other hand, our result here by contrast says if the lengths are very small, if you can squeeze them long enough, uh, small enough, then they will not escape to infinity. Um, and then I was looking at this thing and it looked to me like there's a big gap between the two, uh, between just bounded, like bounded by one from below and be going to at this rate, there's a big gap. So I was wondering what was going on in between. Uh, so based on, on this uh, construction of MLF, uh, so I can prove the following thing. So if the lengths are um, bigger than uh, here I had two to the n. Here one over two to the n, and here I have one over two to the n over two. So uh, it's not the same rate; it's half the uh, square root of the rate. And here I have n. Here I have n to the r, where r is bigger than one half. So if the lengths are bigger than this thing, then also x is not parabolic. So this kind of bridges the gap ultimately between these two. It's not quite uh, answering everything because there is a gap between these two also, right? But it's much smaller. So, so this, this corollary here is kind of saying, um, it's kind of saying that um, uh, you can have a small length and considerably small length, but still the surface will not be parabolic, which is kind of to be expected, but this is kind of, I think, uh, gives a proof and there is a nice, um, uh, th there's a nice constructive way of seeing that happen using this MLF. So you need to construct somehow this MLF, uh, these measured laminations, which are realizable by partial foliations with finite additional uh, integral. So that's, uh, that's one application of, of this uh, result. Um, then uh, also in the same direction of being parabolic, not being parabolic, uh, Tsuji, and later on, Rees in marginals showed the following. So if you take a compact surface and you take Z to the K cover of a compact surface, compact Riemann surface, then um, this Z to the K cover is parabolic if, if, it, if the cover is Z or Z squared, and it's not parabolic if the cover is Z cubed or higher. That was their classical result. 
Um, so, so uh, interesting thing about this thing is this Z, Z squared cover is uh, obtained uh, if you, for example, take uh, one particular Z, Z squared cover where you lift two disjoint simple geodesics, then um, you can see that um, you can choose uh, uh, compact exhaustion by uh, adding uh, more and more pairs to fans, uh, such that the number of uh, geodesic boundary geodesics of your compact exhaustion is of order n at the level n for z squared. And it's for z cubed, it's of order n squared. And then this n versus n squared makes all difference in this theorem. Uh, if it's n, then it says it's parabolic. If it's n squared, uh, then it's not parabolic. Somehow, if it's n squared, you have too many, uh, and the, the, the boundary, the, the geometry of the surface is bounded because it's lift of a compact Riemann surface. So all the lifts have the same kind of length of geodesic because they're just translated of each other. So in this bounded geometry, uh, the number of geodesics kind of boundary in the compact exhaustion kind of gives you the story. Uh, so then uh, uh, we can, uh, using this, again, these ideas, I can uh, obtain approximation argument between n and n squared. Uh, I can say that um, if the number of, um, of these boundaries at the level n is n log n to the p, where p is less than or equal than one, then x is parabolic. And I, I hope to obtain also the, the other part to be not parabolic, but at this point, I don't have that yet. So I have to uh, think about this construction some more. Okay. Um, so, uh, so after this thing, so it's kind of, uh, uh, I think for me, at least it's interesting to try to figure out what exactly is this space MLF, because the way it's defined is basically saying you, you can realize that by a partial foliation with finite Dirichlet integral. So it's not completely explicit in the, in the sense of uh, hyperbolic geometry. Um, and it's also kind of, uh, I have some constructions, but generally what kind of condition uh, this measure lamination has to satisfy. And here is one uh, attempt in this direction. So if X is this infinite surface, but we assume it has bounded pan's decomposition. So we don't allow uh, curves to go to infinity or to shrink to zero. And we call this uh, pan's curves alpha n. So those are the boundaries of the pan's decomposition, alpha n. And then to this alpha n, whenever you have a, uh, a pan's decomposition, you can uh, also take uh, transverse curves beta n, which intersect alpha n minimally. And you choose them also in a way that, um, you choose them also in a way that uh, they have the shortest length among all, all such transverse curves which only intersect alpha n and nothing else. All right, so for each alpha n, there is one curve which intersects just alpha n and no other alpha n. So it's kind of like if you have a, if, if you have two pans glued along alpha n, then there is this curve, there is this other curve which intersects this waist curve. Um, so then the condition is uh, that for any phi uh, integrable quality differential, when you, when you, when you make, uh, it measured corresponding measure uh, lamination, then the intersection with alpha and squared plus intersection with delta, beta and squared sums up to something finite. So that every, every so every, every, everything in MLF has to satisfy this condition. And that is in the case of bounded pan's decomposition. Um, so every time you have a pan's decomposition, whether it's finite surface or infinite, you can talk about train tracks and you can talk about uh, particular train tracks are the Dane Thurston train tracks, where in addition to having uh, uh, your cuffs alpine, you, in each pair of pants, you have a couple of, couple of uh, train paths from one cuff to the other. And uh, there's only finitely many possible ones. And you can talk about train tracks. And once you have a train track, then to any measured lamination, you can assign uh, weights on this train track because any measure lamination can be homotop uh, inside of each pair of pants to, uh, to, to, the, to the branches of your, of your train tracks. And you get uh, weights on, on the edges of, of, the, uh, of your train track 
maps edges of each edge of train track, it's assigned a real number. So that's a point of view that I like to take here. And uh, what I'm saying here is the case of boundary paths decomposition. This condition is equivalent to saying that the sum of the squares of the weights is finite. This is like L2 condition. Uh, so, um, okay. Uh, so finally, um, I was asking myself, is the converse true? If is L, every L2 uh, weight system gives you uh, this ML, MLF? Um, so actually I, I cannot prove that at this moment. What I can prove is that if the weights are in L1, then the, the, measured, the, the measured lamination is in this MLF space, the one that, that uh, comes in. But I cannot prove in general um, for general L2. So there is still some gap. And uh, um, for example, if, if you allow that lengths going of alpines to go to infinity, uh, going to zero, then uh, this condition that we had uh, above the sum of the squares being finite uh, is forcing much stronger conditions, sum of the squares over the length being finite. Uh, so the length is going to zero. So we are now allowing the length to go to zero. So this is kind of more restricted condition. So if the geometry is such that the lengths are going to zero, you get uh, more restricted condition on these intersection numbers. Uh, but there's still some, um, uh, a lot of questions one can ask and would like to know uh, about this uh, sub subspace of measured, measured laminations and uh, especially in the view of their relation to uh, um, uh, especially in the view of their relation to uh, to being parabolic or not but also I believe um, there are some relations to, to sort of um, big mapping class groups right now, uh, which also could be interesting as well, but also needs to be developed some more. So I would like to stop here and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Sari. Uh, we will take some questions. Any questions? So, hi, I I have a question. Yeah. Just a moment. I, ah, okay. okay, so I just wanted to see, uh, look at this page 10 of your theorem where you uh, compared with the ergodicity. So page there, 10 or Page 11. 10, so there were five equivalent conditions. Okay. Ah, yeah. So here, so this infinite Riemann surface obtained by uh, discrete group G, you mean over here? Yeah, yeah. G is so this, this is on opposed to the compact surfaces. Yes, yes. So in compact surfaces, uh, geodesic flow is ergodic. Now in non-compact surfaces, the, the answer is depends. And ah, these all, all these conditions are equivalent. I see. So it's very easy to see on compact surface of finite genus. Uh, there is an argument, uh, it's not so easy, it's not elementary, uh, it's standard by now. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Sure. I cannot hear you, Professor Kukari. <laughs> you have to turn on microphone. No, there's a very specialized area. One has to know very technical details here. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's yeah, sort of like. Whole, all four star your book is full of such things to begin with. And yeah. Afterwards, is uh, Basmajian and <laughs> these, <laughs> these people. It, it, it's it's uh, an interesting mixture. Together with, of course, the Beltrami differential and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you need to know a lot of details. Of no, this is, this is very different. 
his main consideration was when the cantus cantus set was the limit limit set yeah and and my pictures are not doing justice uh i apologize for that but uh you can have infinite genus and uh, in these pictures yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just imagine that here uh, to every pair of pants you put a couple of uh handles and you can have infinite genus as well and and genus can accumulate to some parts of cancer set and does not have to accumulate to the other parts or you can put some uh, things which have like cusps there and a lot of things can happen uh do do people uh, consider this sort of flows in the in the cotangent bundle also uh in the cotangent uh, yes they do uh i mean uh, so then, then what you are seeing will be like a projection of what's going on upstairs no in some sense uh, when you say quotagent bundle you mean like uh the, the flow of for t star uh, t star of x where x is your surface so in x uh, and psi you know it's like hamiltonian flow upstairs well, uh, When you say cotangent bundle, I'm just thinking about holomorphic quality differential as being cotangent bundle. No, no, no. I'm just looking at, uh, you know, the geodesic has a Hamiltonian, right? G i j x s i i s i j. So I okay. look at the, that is the Hamiltonian, and I look at the Hamilton Jacobi equations upstairs in x palma psi. And the projection of that is the geodesic flow downstairs. Okay. So I'm not so sure. This is, a, this is a, what, you know. So, so they, they must be, there they should be a link. I mean, I'm sure, right? Well, um, I, I'm, I cannot say anything to that now. Um, uh, that, I don't know much about that. So I don't know whether there is a link or not, so I'm not sure. No, 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 I mean, this is a, in some sense classical, right? Okay. I mean, if you take any, any book of Hormander or something that they, they talk about these things. So, but I don't think they even, they talk about ergodicity of such things. At least I have not seen. So that is what I'm asking. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, so the flow is, is very well, well is studied by a lot of people. But the is, is I'm not, not? Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's equivalent or not, whether maybe it's the same question or it's a different question that I don't know. OK, thank you. Sure. Are there more questions? Well, if not, uh, let us thank Professor Sari for his very nice talk. We'll take a break of uh, five minutes. Then, uh, then we'll start uh, the lecture by Professor Chanilo. Hi, Jugal, how are you? Ah, hello. Hi, how are you? I, I uh, is, it, is it possible that I can just test and make sure that, you know, this, uh, I have a camera and I have written things out. So it's, it's too, it's a bit primitive. So I just want to test that everything is okay. And yeah, yeah, I please. Don't have any issue. Yeah, yeah. So I just share screen. Is that what yes. you want me to do? Yes. Okay. And share your video also. We are going to record. Yeah. So let me change. Good. The... Nice to see you, Sagun, after many years. Uh, 